Um, yeah, so someone told me today, something funny, someone told me, who knows very well in like madness, told me, you know, Julia, there is a good chance that the audience is going to get confused by the way you look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but really, why? And he says, because they are used to much hairier guys. <laughs> <laughs>
just take a little bit of that. <laughs> so, um, I mean, so what is your relation to vegetarians and meat? Uh, I, I, to none. Uh, yeah. This is the thing. It's very funny because uh, in a lot of articles, uh, French or American or wherever in the world, it's happened sometimes that I read that it was a vegan movie. And <laughs> How? Where? Why? I mean, uh, have you seen the movie? Really? I mean, come on. And the thing is, yeah, that's really weird. I don't know why. I think that some people, it is indeed a movie about morality, but I certainly do not put it on the first degree. It's just a morality between what you're eating. I mean, that would be make a great movie, like something about the planet and everything. But if I wanted to talk about the planet, I wouldn't have shot it there. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's, it's really, yeah, so, so, so basically, it's, she's a vegetarian, and the whole family, of course, is a vegetarian, because the parents know that there is this evil running in the family, and that they want to prevent their children to develop it. And, of course, at the beginning, I thought, okay, I want to make a movie with a cannibal in it, and when you're writing, you always want to have your character to have them... The, uh, the biggest arch, you know, you want it to develop fully from really low to very high in order to make it like more interesting and to create more stakes. So if I am oh, stakes, a lot of And uh, yeah, so cannibal, the extreme opposite, vegetarian, it makes complete sense, that's why. But no, I, I eat meat, I have nothing against it. vegetarians, no, I have no point of view of that. <laughs> no, um, for me, one of the favorite points when I saw the film, and uh, I mean, you started off great for me because you had Donald Lucas. So this is the actor who's in uh, Beverly Stewart's Cal Bear, who's in Alleluia. This is this actor. He's such an incredible actor. Uh, can you talk about working with him, the actor who played the father? Uh, it was very fluid, very, very smooth, very, um, very nice. Very, yeah, I know he's an amazing person. He's so sweet. And he immediately said yes. I mean, I was, yeah, I was a bit, uh, a bit scared to send the script, of course, because I didn't know him. And um, actually, for many reasons, I had so, so much cast to do on this movie because you've seen that there are a lot of extras, and each extra I chose him or her in order to create a plan. So it took a lot of time. And the, 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 the part of the father, I hadn't found it like uh, maybe two weeks before shooting, so we were kind of in a rush. And uh, he came to my mind, of course, because of all the movies he's been in and because of his acting that I really like. And he's such a horror buff that, he, I mean, he read it in the night and he called me the next morning and said, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, before I open up the audience here, so your lead actress, I mean, what kind of direction did you give her? She's got a very kind of like almost haunted, uh, kind of like like, I mean, she's just very individual. How do you kind of like mold her for that, or what direction did you give to her? Well, uh, there is one thing to know beforehand is that I've been working with Gahon who plays the main character uh, since uh, six years now. She was in the short, and it was her first appearance in any movie. She had never made any theater, so she was 12 when she did my first short. Into it. So we grew up together uh, in the movie making business, if you wish to. If I can say, because she's been in all my movies, movies since then, and she, I have a very close relationship with her. She's like my little sister, and we know each other very well. Um, so basically, it's for me. It's really, I really like the the chemistry we have on set because I don't like to talk too much on set to actors whose technicians is different, but to actors I don't like to talk too much because I don't like to psychologize. To, Psychologize? No? What? Yeah. Somehow? Uh, everything. Uh, I, don't, I don't really believe in telling like the whole back story of the character, like two minutes before shooting, one scene. Like, normally this should have been done in prep or even before. So I don't have that notion. What I love with Gamons is that it's only almost about keywords together. And we know each other so well that I can tell her something that, for example, doesn't mean anything the rest of the crew, like I could tell her, I felt power and she didn't know what to do, you know. <laughs> and this, yeah, it's almost like this, cause it's really, and also I work a lot with the body, it's the case with all actors, and of course even more for her, because she has a lot of physical scenes in the movie, as you've seen, especially for example the scene under the sheet, that was extremely physical for her. 
Uh, and um, so I work a lot with the body, with the body positions, um, with some um, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like sometimes as, as simple as a tilt of the head, like when she's watching him uh, playing football and she looks so crazy and when before she starts bathing in the nose. And it's just like she spent for her, she spent like maybe four hours just in the same position like this, looking up, and she had no tears at the end, she was completely dry in the end. <laughs> and it's just as simple as, as, a, as a, a body position. And at the same time, I also um, um, try to have a, a set, any set actually, any room. Uh, any bedroom to have a furniture that was very close to the floor, so that all the characters will have like animal-like postures because they, since it's like a, you know a slouchy uh, couch or something like this or or a mattress on the floor and everything, so you're on, you're on your own knees or you're doing this and stuff. So that I don't want people to be standing like this. You know, it was important. So you're like Honestly, you see the bedroom, we just put garbage in the room. Yeah. <laughs> it was really not kidding, it's super, super, no, no, it's super, super uh, thought before in advance and everything, but the, the, we, we do something a bit, as you say, a bit um, raw <laughs> in terms of set. I, it's very ironic that we're in the middle of a university campus, <laughs> basically all the furnishings around us. Uh, do we have any questions for the audience? Yes, sir. Can, can, can you stand up because I don't see you speaking? So, oh, hi. Uh, so That's you, I'm saying hi to you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the government says to be reality in the script, such as right, the guy talks about fucking monkeys near the beginning of the movie. Uh, she's very animalistic in the sex scene, and of course, there's this to be I was wondering if you saw any connection between bestiality and cannibalism, and if so, how did you bring that out in the script? Uh, there is obvious, I mean, yes, of course there is a link between them, but at the same time the thing is that I don't want cannibalism in the movie to only convey the idea of bestiality or sexuality. I mean, you see actually a question that I've been asked a lot about what does the cannibalism in the movie mean. And uh, I think it's nice to, it means a lot to me, I have a lot of different uh, takes on this. Uh, I think it's better if I don't give a key for this one, because honestly I think it would be a shame, I think it's pretty much like what what you want to see in it, because if it hurts, if it hurts you when you see it, and where it hurts in the good place, I mean, where you you get interested and you want to know more, it means that it brings something in you, and this something is only yours, because the movie is talking about something very archaic, this kind of desires, dark desires, and stuff like that, and I think they can um, morph from people to people. I mean, did I answer question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because I mean. Uh, when it comes to animals and it comes to what we eat, it's so far removed. I mean, you, you sex sexualize the fisting of the cow. I grew up in the country. That's just, that's, that, there's nothing sexual about that. That's I just. Yeah. It was not meant to be sexual, otherwise, I would have had way more sound design when she takes out the shit. <laughs> <laughs> The interesting thing about the film is that you're dealing with this profession, which is very technical, and it's dealing with this, and so for people to make the leap to that kind of kind of assumption, it, it just shows how far removed we are from our food. Absolutely. Uh, That's not what I'm talking about in the movie again. <laughs> uh, yes, you there. Uh, tout d'abord, merci pour le film, c'est malade. Okay, well, uh, and, uh, in yeah, English, yeah, the, rest, the rest of the movie. Uh, what was the significance of the scene where the drape was pulled off the dead animal by itself? What was the significance of the scene where the drape was pulled off the dead animal? Of the dead dog, yeah. After, after the football scene, after the soccer scene, yeah. Good question. Um, I see, personally, and again it's only me, I see it as a premonition when, um, of uh, Adrian's death. And also see it as um, let's say, a dead zone between uh, the moment she was still um, human and the moment where she's gonna become an animal before she goes back to humanity, of course, in the end. But this was for me to, to also to portray the fact that she was becoming something else. And uh, yeah, and also I think that, that's it. And we have here the part up here. Uh, the 
the um, uh, makeup effects of the wounds uh, were, were very convincing and certainly were very important to uh, punctuating the story and making it believable. Can you tell me about uh, the work that was done uh, by the effects? Uh, so for the special effects, I personally like to work with uh, set special effects um, as much as I can. I'm not crazy about CGI's, even though there are CGI's in the movie, but the, um, there, are, there, yeah, there are no set special effects, I say, because I think they give a more vintage and relatable feel to the movie. I can't relate too much to CGI's, because we see too much, even in commercials. So I think it's a bit cold. Um, so I always work with the same company in France, that's called Atelier Suez of Neuf. Um, they've done my short and then my chief feature and then this one. And um, actually, I mean, of course they're I mean, they amazing, otherwise I wouldn't be working with them. And uh, I really like the way, um, I mean, the, when you have a special effects day on, on the shooting, it really feels like you're going back to summer camp or to uh, middle school or stuff like that. It's really like everyone is a bit wants to touch the fake blood, wants to try your finger. Finger is gummy bears, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, so I really, yeah, I, I really like this kind of thing. It's a kind of breath of fresh air in, uh, in a shooting, this kind of thing. So there you have it, gummy bears, movie <laughs> magic. <laughs> um, all right. So the, the question was, does she have interest in going to Hollywood and is there a particular horror property that she wants? Are you asking her if she wants to do a remake or a reboot? <laughs> <laughs> Reinvent it. Okay. I mean, so, so what kind of, uh, when it comes to the genre of horror, what kind of stuff do you like to pursue? Well, I'm currently writing my second feature in French, so it will be a French movie. Um, I am of course interested. I don't think the thing is that I don't think in terms of Hollywood or not Hollywood, and I don't have this kind of uh, the writer saying I like making movies in France as well. I mean, I, my producers are amazing, and I would actually not like to let them go. So it's um, the thing is I think that, that I would like to make a movie in English because because of the genre. And because there are some things that are different, it's not the same feel when it's a uh, movie in English and a movie in French. I mean, I think, for example, that French makes me really makes me make it very, very realistic. And maybe if it was in English, I wouldn't have written exactly the same jokes or the same dialogue, and maybe it would have been a bit more, I don't know, of not sure. I just want to do it in English, sorry. It's a very bad answer, but I would, yeah, do it in English. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would say, like, 